Yo, what's up? Um, it's your girl Shree Bad. Um, yes, this is an upload. This is not a live. I just had like a, a four or five hour conversation with one of my um sister and And she really helped me to understand how to disseminate some things to all of you in relation to Tantra and yoga and the sexual aspects of Tantra. This upload will be first because there are certain things that I want everyone to understand Especially when it comes to the sexual aspects of Tantra. I would like to explain to you polygamy from a Hindu perspective. All right. And hopefully it will allow you to understand the basics of Tantra so that when I do this live, which will definitely be on the black screen, and I talk my talk, um, you're a lot more open to understanding what I will tell you, All right? This... Uh, story and stories on polygamy and what the foundation of polygamy is from a Hindu perspective begins with a god. He is my favorite god, and his name is Shiva. You see, Shiva is blue. Now, I have my own reasons on why certain gods were made blue. I'll give you two. Kali, her name means black the darkness of time and space. I would liken Kali to the dark matter that holds the universe together. Krishna, the name Krishna means black. The darkness of time His name literally means black, but they are blue. So you figure out why they would have these gods who are named after blackness, but they're blue. Let's get back to Shiva, shall we? Even though Shiva is blue, his throat is considered to be a very dark blue because it's said that Shiva can contain all the poisons of the universe and he holds them right there at the throat chakra. Shiva has dreadlocks and these dreadlocks are said to hold the river Ganga so it does not overflow and destroy the earth. He sits on a tiger rug and more than likely in the lotus position. You see, my favorite god Shiva is considered the god of destruction, but he's not very destructive at all. Well, there are instances where he was but for the most part, he's a transformer. You see, in his aspect of Nataraj, he loves to dance. 
and if he is not Taraj stops dancing, the universe will come to an end. When Shiva gets upset, he might become Rudra, and Rudra is the howler. Rudra is the sound of the wind in space that helps to shape the universe. Shiva loves to meditate. And the last thing you want to do is awaken Shiva from his meditation. Because if you do that, then he will become Rudra and he will destroy the universe. No one awakens Lord Shiva when he is meditating except for Shiva himself. The god Shiva liked to hang out with goblins and he liked to hang out at cemeteries with said goblins and he loved to smoke weed. Yes, it's true. He did. When he wasn't meditating or among other things. We'll get to that soon. He loved to hang at the cemetery. Remember, they said he was the destroyer. So if he's the destroyer, why would he be afraid of dead things? Well, he has to greet him and stuff, right? Yeah, chill with him, everything. Yeah. 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 There are other awesome things to tell you about Lord Shiva, and I will mention them, and you will understand where I'm coming from as far as polygamy and the foundations of polygamy from a Hindu perspective. And it'll also give you a huge understanding on Tantra. Before we go any further, I need to tell you that yoga itself comes from Tantra. Sanyas, monkhood, comes from Tantra. But I digress. Back to Shiv. Yay! Now... I told you all before about the story of the goddess of the Devi and how she came about as many different aspects of the male counterparts, the male gods, and how these consorts came about. But what I did not tell you is what happened afterwards. So I told you that Brahma is the creator. His so-called consort was named Saraswati. She rode on a swan and she had a lyre, L-Y-R-E, in her arms. She was very versed in music and she was very scholarly. She was a very high intellectual well, what would you expect from the Creator? From Vishnu, the sustainer, came Lakshmi, who was filled with beauty and charm and grace. The grace of the beauty and stuff like that that I did not want to talk about. Well, of course, they got along. And then there was Shiv. Now his consort was Durga. Durga was the protector. But before we get to Durga, I have another story to tell you. So, after the goddesses were so-called created and they defeated the demons you know what else could they do but sit around and chill right and i told you that durga and kali are the same being okay so that's why we're putting them to the side 
Because we'll explain the dynamic with those ladies in a second. And I told you that Vishnu and Lakshmi got along great. They had no problems whatsoever. But Brahma, the creator, he could not get along with his consort. Okay? You see, Vishnu and Lakshmi had no problems whatsoever. And apparently Shiva had a lot of fun with Kali. He did not have to have fun with Durga. But here is Brahma trying to be with his consort Saraswati. But she's so smart. And she's like, ew, you're like my dad. And if the story is true, you're actually my freaking brother. Why the hell would I fuck you? That makes no sense whatsoever. I am not doing that. And what you need to do is get your nasty ass the hell away from me. Okay? And Saraswati got on her swan and flew across the earth. Brahma, being the creator, could follow her anywhere he wanted to on earth. And trust me, she did not want to be bothered. She went across the universe and Brahma started creating heads big enough to see no matter what part of the universe she went to, he could see her. Shiva is meditating. He is hearing Saraswati like, get away, get away. Somebody help me. Leave me the hell alone. And I told you, Nobody awakens Lord Shiva during his meditation. So, of course, my man, he come out of his meditation like, what the hell is going on? Who the fuck? What? I'm about to destroy this world. I'm about to destroy everything. Who I got to kill first? Sir, it's what the... Forgive me, Lord Shiva. I just want this creep old God to get the hell away from me. What you mean, girl? What's going on here? Listen, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but um, I'm not fucking my father. I'm not fucking my brother, okay? We need to do something about this. I'm not happy. Um, he's following. Look at all these heads, man. Look at all of these heads in the freaking universe. They're watching me. Now they're watching you. And Shiva said, oh, hell no. He went straight to Brahma and said, "Look, listen, man. You coming off real creepy, dude, and don't nobody like that shit, and you already know not to fuck with me when I'm meditating, because you know I can destroy everything up in this motherfucker, and you done created this shit, okay? So if you created it, and I'm going to destroy it, and then fuck with what? Oh, before we go any further, uh, most uh, Shaivites, followers of Shiva, think that Shiva is the creator, sustainer, and destroyer. They don't give a fuck about the other two. Anywho, let's go back. <laughs> and Brahma said, well, that's my consort. You get, to, you know, you get to be with whoever. And Vishnu get to be with whoever. And why I can't be with well, And she would say, oh, get out my face with that creepo shit. Long story short, Shiva cuts a couple of those heads off. Walks around with one of them and makes Brahma walk around with the other one. And it is said that he felt so low from getting his heads cut off from his brother Shiva that that is why there are only very few Brahma temples in the entire India. Okay? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I say Lord Shiva came first. Now! We're also going to get to Vishnu in a moment, but let's get to Lord Shiva first. Tantra first started as books. And all of these books 
were compiled and based on conversations between Shiva and Shakti. Shiva being pure consciousness and Shakti being pure energy. Now we're going along the lines of Shiva being creator, sustainer, and destroyer. Far beyond the Trinity. Okay? Primordial and pure. A little bit higher than the, you know, the three, the three whatevers. Right? Not the All-Mother. But just under the All-Mother. Okay? Because remember, from one comes two, then three, blah, blah, blah. Right? One plus one is two? Great. One plus one ain't one right now. Not yet. So, Shiva's original consort is Shakti. And as pure consciousness, the All Mother pure pour, pulled out just enough pure energy mixed with that pure consciousness to create Durga, the protector. Durga had a purpose. Kali, on the other hand, was a lot more fun. But remember, Kali and Durga are the same being. Right? Kali is just Durga upset. But like I said, which I'll explain a little bit later, Kali was a lot more fun. So maybe it was okay for the Lord Shiva to say, you know what, Durga, you go ahead where you got to go. You go ahead and protect them people. You, you, you leave Kali here with me, okay? And Kali also had her little stuff to do. He ain't worried about that. Remember, she would like to meditate, but I'll tell you what else she would like to do. She would like to have sex. Now, I ain't talking about Shiva and Shakti right now, okay? We're going to talk about something else. And this is where Vishnu is also going to come back in. In the Hindu tradition, an avatar is pure consciousness descending into human form. The demigod of sorts. So in Christianity, Jesus Christ would be an avatar of the Most High God. Pure consciousness descending into that human vessel. Our human selves are trying to ascend up to pure consciousness. That's the whole purpose of what the fuck we here for and why we talk this spiritual shit and why we go through these motions, okay? So, Durga had an avatar and her name was Parvati. Parvati was a lovely woman and she had a father that was very devout in his Brahma worship. All right. And he did not like the god Shiva. He did not like the Lord Shiva. Oh, and it said that most of the books that you read in Hinduism and yoga and all these awesome texts came from Lord Shiva, okay? They didn't really come from Brahma. And we can talk about Vishnu later with the Hare Krishnas and all that other stuff. There's a whole other thing. We're sticking with Shaivism. Uh, yeah, Shaivism, which is uh, the worship of Shiva mostly. That's your man. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So the father, Parvati's father, did not like Shiva. Because like I told you, she would like to smoke. He liked to hang out at the cemetery with the goblins bunning and all of that. You know, every once in a while, he'll go, you know, talk that educational, spiritual stuff with the people down. 
But back then, you know what I'm saying? He just liked to meditate, smoke, and chill with the homies at the cemetery. And, you know, once in a while, you know, talk to these fools over here and drop some knowledge and then go back to what he do. Right? But remember, I told you she would like to fuck. But he ain't fucking right now. You know, he, he, what we say, he up in the mountains. He's up in the Himalaya mountains. He's doing the thing. He's doing them things on the, on the tiger rug, okay? He's collecting that energy. He ain't fucking. All right, let's go. So Parvati now, even though the father loves Brahma, she loves Shiva. And she wants to be with Shiva. She knows that Shiva is the man for her, okay? That's my guy. I need to be with that guy. Parvati did not know that she is an avatar, okay? They usually have no idea. Well, we'll get to Krishna, but they usually have no idea that they're avatars. And even when they do realize it, they're like, listen, we lived this human life already, so what the fuck does that mean? Okay, good. She lived that human life. So here we are. Parvati, I want to be with Shiv. I want to be with Shiv. How can I be with Shiv? And everybody, even the gods, were like, you can't be with that Shiv. He meditating. And you cannot trouble that man while he meditating. You trouble that God while he meditating. He's going to destroy everything. Brahma was like, you see my head over here? Come on, bitch, don't play. Don't you like your head? Don't, mm -mm, don't do that, child. He's going to cut your face. He, he cut me? Look. Don't do it, homie. Vishnu was like, listen, I like to sustain. Don't bother that man with his bullshit. If he meditate, let him meditate. You're going to have to wait till he's done, Bodhi. I don't know what to tell you. Okay? I don't know what you're going to do. Parvati said, I, I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. So she went in front of the cave where Lord Shiva was meditating. And she sat in front of that cave and meditated. Years passed. She did not move. She did not waver. And you know how you just feel somebody's energy? And that shit resonates sometimes. And when Shiva decided to awaken from his meditation, and he looked, and he came outside of his cave, and he saw this woman. Human woman. Reminded him so much of Durga. And he awakened that woman and he said, you will be my wife. Great. Marvathy is happy as hell. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to get married. Hey. Shorty went back to her father and said, yo, I'm going to get married to Lord Shiva, okay? And the father was mad as hell. Mad in the ross, yo. She was like, look, Pop, I'm going to fuck what you talking about. I'm going to marry this dude, right? I'm going to marry this god, this demigod right here. I'm going to marry him, and I don't care what you say, because that's my man's, okay? I ain't sitting here on my ass and meditate for nothing, all right? He woke up for me. He picked me up. He said, we're going to get married. We got to get married, okay? Okay. Okay. I tell you, the father ain't like that shit. So, Parvati, apparently, you know, they had the wedding ceremony set up, all this. You know, she he busy smoking and, and, and drinking and having a bachelor party with the goblins and shit. And the father's like, you're not going to marry Shiva. I don't care what you say. And right before Shiva comes to the house to marry the lady, you know, Parvati is like, nah, you not. Listen, if you want to stop me from marrying this man, I'm going to jump in this fire. Because the father took everything and created a fire to burn it all up. He did not want her marrying this god. So here comes Shiva. 
about to go meet his wife. And what does he see? He sees poverty jump in the fire. He said, yo, what the holy high hell? What the, what the, what? What you doing to my woman, man? You, she in the fire, man. And the father was like, oh my God, my daughter, she gonna die. Da, 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 da. She was like, what? She ain't gonna die, you stupid. Look at my girl right there, man. What you think her meditating with me did? She, come on, girl, let's go, stupid ass. This is love right here. You better get the hell out my face. You see how loyal this woman is? This is my woman, man. Why are you trying to stop me from my woman, man? So, of course, the father was like, oh, my bad. Don't kill me, Lord Shiva. I know you mean as fuck. Homie said, man, I ain't got time for you, man. I got my woman now. Woman, you ready, woman? And Barreti said, yes, I'm ready, mans. And they went about their business. And once they got married, this is when the Lord Shiva would spend long periods of time meditating. Long periods of time smoking and hanging out with his goblin buddies by the cemetery. And long periods of time fucking. Parvati. Now I'm going to tell you a story about the god Ganesha. Okay? Lord Shiva and Parvati had two children. The first son's name was Skanda. Okay? And Skanda pretty much did his own thing. You know, he learned what he learned and da-da-da. He went about his business. Um, so he was not a problem. He was cool, okay? And remember, I told you that the Lord Shiva, he liked his um, routine of meditation and uh, smoking and chilling and maybe teaching somebody. You know, at this point in time, instead of teaching the, the local people, he would teach his son. And then, you know, he would fuck. And then, you know, spend that time fucking and, you know, then go start the whole process again. Because, you know, you still got to um, maintain the earth shit, right? Good. So, there was a period of time that he, that he fucked, you know, that he spent having sex with poverty, right? And then he went about his way to go meditate, all right? Now, while he was meditating, Parvati had a second son. And the Lord Shiva did not know that he had a second son. Because remember, nobody's supposed to trouble Lord Shiva while he is meditating, okay? We know what happens. So she had this baby. And let's not forget that Parvati had her schedule, okay? She would fuck her man, take care of these kids. And, and she would meditate as well, okay? She would meditate. So, at some point in time, Parvati said to her youngest son, I'm going in the cave to meditate. Don't let nobody come in here until I am done. Are we clear? And the baby said, yes. We are clear. Nobody gets in here, buddy. And she said, I love you, baby. And he said, I love you too, mommy. Mwah. So, as Parvati is sitting outside, I mean, inside the cave meditating, her little son is sitting outside like nobody's going to trouble her. Well... Here comes Lord Shiva. He just finished his meditation. And I guess he want to fuck again. Like, you know, he went through hanging out and smoking and shit. And he was like, yo, time to fuck. But remember, he didn't know he had no kid. So here he comes. Whoop -de -whoo, you know, with his trident and shit. He chilling. And I mean, I'm not going to get into what the trident mean and all that extra shit. This means behind all that motherfucker, Okay. He's swinging his dreads around, you know, he got his trident, you know, he walking back, about to get some pum pum, like, wait a minute, what the hell? Who are you? The little kid said, who are you? He said, well, I'm Lord Shiva. And the little kid, remember, the little kid don't know his daddy. He know he got a daddy, but he don't know who his daddy is. 
He said, okay, I'm glad you Lord Shiva, but I'm not supposed to let nobody in, okay? Because my mama said no. Said, your mama? How's your mama? Don't worry about that. I'm not supposed to let nobody up in here, bro. You better get out of my face. And Lord Shiva was like, little boy, do you know who the fuck I am? And the little boy said, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm going to stay right here. I'm listening to my mama. My mama said, don't let nobody in here. And that's what's going to pop. Well, you know, you can't mess with the Lord Shiva too bad. He, he cut the poor little boy head off, man. He said, I'm going to get to my wife. I don't know who the hell you are. But the truth, chop that head right the hell off. Here comes Parvati. You know, she jumped out of her meditation like, what the fuck? She was like, Shiva, why did you kill your son? He was like, what? She was like, this is your son, Ganesh. You were meditating. I couldn't tell you that I popped the kid out and you done killed your son. He was like, well, he ain't let me in. She said, I told him not to let nobody in. You don't want nobody bothering you while you meditate. You think I want somebody bothering me while I meditate? What you going to do about my son? He dead. He cut his head off. What you going to do? He's like, oh, man. Oh, God, I got to do something. So, you know, he looking for a head. He don't want to kill nobody else. He's like, I got to find a head somewhere. Where the fuck I'm find a head at? And it just so happened that a baby elephant had died for whatever reason it had died, you know. Um, it just died, you know. So here's the dead elephant, and Shiva says, well, I got to save my son. So he cuts the elephant's head, head off and put it on his son, and that's why Lord Ganesha has an elephant fucking head. Now let's get to the fun that he had with Kali, okay? Remember, Durga and Parvati and Kali are technically the same being. As well as Shakti. Same being. Four different aspects. So we can say that Shiva had four different wives. Right? Now he loved to have fun with Kali. Kali and him would play a lot of games. I'll mention one of the games to you. Kali and Shiva like to have um, dance-offs. Let's call it that. And, you know, they would battle each other like who could dance better or who could sing better or who could fight better and who could do all this better. And usually Kali would win. Finally, one day they were out in the woods and they were like, yo, we're going to have a dance off, right? And, and Kali's doing the move. She know that she beat him with the last time. And Shiva was like, uh-uh, I got something for you. Bam, bam, bam. Now, the fact that Shiva, the move that he used was new. So Kali was like, yo, how am I going to beat this dance move? There was only one thing that Kali could do to win. And it made her lose. It was said she did a yoga pose called the bird of paradise. If I have, nah, the thumbnail isn't big enough for me to show you what um, the pose birds of paradise looks like. But go on Google and look up birds of paradise pose. Okay? And it'll show you. And there's one leg straight up to the sky. So, ladies and gentlemen, why do you think that the goddess Kali won lost that dance-off? Because if her leg is up in the air and one leg is down, what do you think is exposed, children? <laughs> and the Lord Shiva says, hey, that's my wife. So, hey, boom, I win. Because now we get to do the other thing I like to do. Don't worry, we'll get to the moral of this with polygamy and the foundation, okay? Let's just jump real quick over to Vishnu. His avatar was named Krishna, okay? And like I said, Krishna means black. Krishna loved cows, and he loved cow's milk. And milk back then was considered a soma plant, 
well, you know, one of the somas. So he had what were called gopis, cow herders, and these gopis loved him and they were so devoted to him. You see, Krishna was about love. But no matter how many gopis that Krishna had, he only had true eyes for Radhe. And Radhe was a woman. She was the main woman, okay? Now, another way that uh, Shiva and Kali like to play games, uh, there is a book out there in... Um, Hindu folklore that says that one day uh, Shiva and Kali were having sex, right? Parvati turned into Kali and they had great sex. And after the sexual act, Shiva looked at Kali and said, I would love to know how an orgasm feels as a woman. And Kali said, hmm, I would love to know how an orgasm feels as a man. So in order to do that, Kali became Krishna and Shiva became Radhe. That's a whole other thing. Let's get back to the basis of what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? Krishna and Radhe was all about true love. And we all know about these little gopis at the side that they had that, that Krishna had. They didn't have no problem with Radhe. And trust me, Radhe had no problems with these gopis. The concept of Tantra is based on Shiva and Shakti. But clearly, Shiva had a whole bunch of other wifeys or aspects of these people. Right? So that she could do what he do. Yeah. What this tells me is that the basis for polygamy is actually monogamy. Okay? You still need a one-on-one -on -one connection with somebody. Let me explain a little bit further. From what I've learned about polygamy and polygyny and polyamory or whatever the, you know, the things are, it is based on an agreement. Okay, And this agreement has to have a foundation. Now, a man cannot have an agreement with himself and then fool all these other women. That never works. Okay? You can't just say, hey, I want to be polygamous. And the other person does not agree with it. And then you do something totally disrespectful, like bring some other broad in, right? That's another reason why these threesomes, I'm not even going to go to polygamy. Threesomes don't get along or polygamy don't get along. Because who's going to say that these two women are going to get along? Who say that? There has to be an agreeance to something and there has to be a foundation to something even a pimp has to have a bottom bitch or a madam okay to take care of all the other ones he still has to have a number one the one next to him and then the, all the other ones can surround his ass right but he still has to have that main one and that main one has to agree. And not only agree, but accept. And if you want to accept something, you got to get something in return. So I guess she has to feel like she needs to be felt. 
and then you can go do whatever the fuck you want to do. As long as my needs are met with you and we still have this and da da da, boom, we'll go ahead and do what you got to do, right? That's the basis of that shit. Please feel free to comment, you know, create another video, let me know I'm wrong. But this is what I'm saying. The universe wasn't created with Shiva, Shakti, and, and Saraswati, and fucking Lakshmi. No! It's pairs. Shiva and Shakti. Vishnu and Lakshmi. Brahma, Saraswati. Has to start with two. Actually starts with one. And you can't force this shit on people. The, the gods didn't even force it on one another. It wasn't there. You have to learn how to have a respect for something. You got to learn how to have that honor and respect and love for yourself before you can honor any agreement with somebody else. That's the main problem. If you don't know how to be in a monogamous relationship and you don't know how to honor a very basic agreement of one-to-one, -one, how are you going to be able to honor any agreements with anybody else? It don't make sense. Make it make sense, y'all. Tantra is not about the fuckery shit that you see nowadays. It's not. The basis of Tantra, like I said, are conversations between Shiva and Shakti. Shakti would ask the questions. Shiva would answer those questions. The topics were broad and wide, not just with sex, not just with meat, but with everything, consciousness, concentration, focus. This is why everything is said to come from the tantric text, yoga, this, the Vedas, the Puranas, the Hindu traditions, all of it came from Tantra. The concept of Shiva and Shakti. Now before I go, I knew this was long. But I have to ask you, before I go on live and explain certain things to you. Who do you think was more powerful in the conversations between Shiva and Shakti? You think Shiva with the answers or Shakti with the questions? Here's something that I want you to consider. A teacher, right? A teacher does not ask you a question because the teacher does not know the answer. A teacher asks you questions to see if you know the answer and you know how to apply the answer. So the teacher here was not Shiva with the answer. It was Shakti with the questions. Nothing moves in Tantra without the Shakti. We're going to get to that if and when I do this live tonight. I might do it tomorrow. Tron got my Wi-Fi, so it's going to take a while for this to upload but once again I wanted you to understand that even though some of these gods and demigods seem to have a polygamous type of vibe with them you know and I, hey like I told you if these stories were real I don't know I wasn't there uh, Krishna could have had sex with all them gopis and dealt with Radhe but that was his number one queen and the rest of them was on right Shiva needed his woman broken up into four parts in order for him to be completely satisfied. But there was still one. Durga. 
didn't have no problem sharing him with the other aspects of herself because she said, look, I got something over here to do. Okay? So you go ahead and do what you do. You need me to split into this and this and this? All right, cool. Go ahead. Go ahead, Wody. I know you love me. Yeah, yeah. I know you love me. Let me go do my do. Let me go do my do. And what I will also say is this. When the Lord Shiva took his time to meditate, to gain those powers, to become the transformer and the destroyer, there was no woman involved. No sex involved. Because if he had to use the ego, there would be no tantra to begin with. Remember, the Shiva I talk about is pure consciousness. Not no consciousness with no ego in it. Shakti is pure energy. Not a little bit of energy with some ego up in that bitch. No. No. So if you, and I've said this in videos before, Lord Shiva understood that in order for him to have the power to transform as a man, he had to transform it within. He was not to be distracted by what sex brings. There was a time for sex. And you can't reach the ethers and have sex at the same time. Not when the ego is involved, folks. This is why it's hard for many people who want to do polygamy to succeed in that motherfucker, okay? Because you got to take the ego out of it. You got to honor this agreement here. And your personal little individual bullshit, you know what I'm saying? If you get mature spiritually, you already know. I ain't got to cheat. I ain't got to fuck somebody else. I ain't got to do all this other shit. Because if you ever had sex and hit a spiritual level due to that sex, you know that the feeling that you get from that sex does not compare to the sexual, the spiritual expansion that you get from connecting pure consciousness and pure energy. That creates reality. One and one. One man and one woman create a baby. Life. So I don't care if you're polygamous. I don't care if you're polyamorous. I don't care if you're the other one too. I don't care. You got to be monogamous to yourself. If you want to be polygamous just to fuck, come on, that's stupid. Don't marry nobody. Just go fuck. And don't try to be no monk either. Don't try to be no messiah because they can't fuck. Not for long periods of time. Not to gain the type of power, the spiritual power that you want. No, you got to sit there in celibacy, bruh. Because I'm going to tell you now. Most of the yoga poses that you do, especially the seated ones, the different ways to sit, were designed for sannyas and men to stay celibate so that they can take that sexual energy that they keep putting out and let it reform inside to become spiritual energy. Women ain't got that problem, homies. Yeah, we get back to that. In 49 minutes, we're about to hit 50, and I think that's it for now. I got to go. You know what I'm saying? I want to live a little bit more life. What? On oh, the family in good times. What the hell are they talking about? Listen, TV acting crazy. Bye, y'all.